Hi and welcome to part two of our fundamental movements video. Here we're going to share some more advanced movements and games. If you want to know why fundamentals are important or what fundamental movements actually are, then check out part one video which I'll put in our description. Let's jump into our first activity which is going to be an obstacle course. A range of different movements that's going to challenge and develop children's fundamental movement skills. We're practically going to empty the PE store cupboard and set up several different stations. Here we have a cargo net that children need to crawl beneath. We also have hurdles that children can hop and jump over and we also have a bench that children need to get on top of, do a fundamental movement of their choice before safely dismounting. It's great to set up lots of different stations so that children have a lot of different activities to try and also they don't have to wait as long because there's fewer people per station. Our next structure is the carousel. You're going to present children with a wide range of different games so that they can select and then play their favourite one. Once you've set up mats across the whole of the hall, children are then going to safely make their way to a mat in either groups of two or they've got the option of working on their own. So games for pairs, they've got to try and get from one side of the mat all the way across to the other side without bumping into their partner. Now of course they can use a whole range of different movements, forward, backward, sideways, hopping, skipping, jumping, crawling, bear crawls, anything you can imagine. Children can of course work as individuals and complete the same task, but this time balancing a beanbag on their head. For this reason, they'll need to move a lot more slowly and a lot more fluidly to get to the other side, mastering a certain level of control. Our final game has two children standing close together with their hands up. Now you win the game by making your partner move their feet. You can either do this by pushing your partner's hands so that they step back, or if your partner's going to do a really big push, you can put your hands down so that they step forward once they've lost balance. Presenting the games this way gives children choice and ownership of their activities. They're more likely to stick with it and develop a wide range of skills that you can use in everyday life. Although not all of the skills might be totally applicable. And finally, nice and simple, we have skipping. Everyone is different, so there'll be some children that can smash out skipping straight away, including tricks, flicks, and all sorts of weird and wonderful things. Some children during that time might have to stop, rest, and then start going again. The art of small jumps and big jumps are very, very present in invasion sports, gym, dance, athletics, and they also play a minor role as well in striking and field games, as well as net and wall games, a skill that children simply have to learn. As always, here are our three quick tips to take your teaching to the next level. And our first quick tip is to vary the movements used. Not only the direction, but also hopping, skipping, running, jumping, crawling, side steps, and so on. Keep the rounds short and sharp. Personally, I like to use less than a minute per round, and that helps eliminate boredom and gives children a constant fast-paced challenge. Variety, after all, is the spice of life. The second thing to consider is whether your children are going to play cooperative games, working together as a team towards one common goal, or whether they're actually going to be competing against each other for resources, points, time, whatever it may be. This will come down to knowing your children and working out as a class what they need. Personally, I like teamwork games because it promotes a lot of skills and links into most schools' ethoses. Ethos? Ethi? And finally, if you add equipment, do so very cautiously. Remember, the focus isn't on mastery of the equipment, it's mastery of children's body and how they move it effectively. Adding in equipment usually just deters from that fact. There's no rush to get children highly competent. The road is long and it's very scenic. Enjoy. Thank you for watching this week's video. Be sure to like, share and subscribe before jumping over to our Facebook group for more free resources.